Hey guys, I want to tell you about my painting today. This is actually a brand new painting. I know you can't see it exactly. Let me see if I can move that a bit. It's the lion and he's crushing something, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. Um, the painting's called Deliverance and I actually want to tell you about why I painted this because I had a dream a couple of years ago and it was intriguing and this is the result of the dream so in the dream i was given a whole bunch of amazing things from the lord the lord gave me a mansion and all these amazing things that i knew he wasn't giving them to me in heaven i knew i was on earth and he was giving me these things for earth for the world for me and one of the things he gave me was a beach it was a private beautiful beach it's just beautiful beach like a caribbean beach and i had a little house on the beach and i was looking out of on this beach thinking oh my goodness it's amazing i was in shock and awe that he had given this to me and um i was thinking wow there's no people on this beach but it's beautiful and it's mine and as i looked out i saw the most shocking terrible thing on the beach i saw this massive crocodile uh, when i say massive i mean it was like many high-rise buildings together it was like a it was a monster and the thing that terrified me about this monster, it had one foot in the sea and one foot on the beach, it was huge, was that its eyes were so proud. It's the only thing I, I could, way I can explain it. It was, they were so proud and arrogant that I was terrified to look at the crocodile because I thought if it caught my gaze, it, gaze, it would kill me instantly. And so I moved my face away. I thought I will never look at that crocodile. I mean, my, my view was on not that crocodile right from my house, but I thought I will live around that crocodile. I'll never step one foot on that beach because that crocodile is huge. And um, anyway, my dream was incredible dream. Woke up the next morning. There were lots of elements that were powerful. And I was like, wow, that was amazing dream, except for one part, that crocodile was a terrible part of the dream. And I asked the Lord about it over many months. And I eventually understood the Lord was saying to me, you know, Mandy, you never challenged the crocodile. You never even had a thought in the dream. Oh, maybe I could kill it. Or maybe I can get someone to kill it. Or maybe we can deal with the crocodile. Not once in the whole dream. All I thought was I will avoid the crocodile. The whole time I thought I will avoid the monster. I am not going to go near it. I'm scared of it. And, and it's, the thing is, logic told me it's too big for me. So why would I even bother, right? I'm just going to stay away from it. I've got so many amazing things in my life to enjoy that were given to me in the dream. Why would I bother with the beach? But the thing is, God had given me that real estate and he wanted me to conquer something. And I was too afraid to even address it in my mind. It wasn't even like I was too afraid to go there. I just wouldn't even think about it. I wasn't, wouldn't even allow myself to contemplate actually fighting this beast because of one reason and that is that I was too small and it was too big and um, so the Lord really challenged me about that you know and I won't go into that whole thing but um, about two years later I went to visit the Newport mansions now if you're from the northeast you know the North Newport mansions beautiful mansions on the ocean and um, they are they were just historical homes and, and just beautiful and one of the homes I was walking outside in the gardens and right there on the beach, I mean, it was the sculpture that overlooked the beach was this beautiful bronze sculpture of a lion, which is what I painted. I painted the sculpture at Newport Mansions. That's what this is. is. And um, it was a bronze uh, a sculpture. It's actually a, um, a, it's a remake, a reproduction of the original, which is in France. But um, I, was, I was fascinated because as I got near the sculpture, it was like I just, my soul was captured. I was got punched. Like it was like Holy Spirit punch. It was like, whoa, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. I just stood there mesmerized. My whole family was like, okay, Mandy likes the sculpture. <laughs> Cause I couldn't move from that sculpture for quite a while. Took a million pictures. And I'm gonna show you what I saw. So I'm gonna show you and lift this up now. So I saw this amazing line. I mean, it was so angry. Look at the anger. I mean, and the power. I mean, I couldn't even capture it. You've got to go to that Newport mansion to see that. <laughs> and, um, it was crushing this crocodile and you can't actually see very well because the perspective is off because I'm busy moving this around, but it was crushing. I'm going to put that over there. You can see it. It was crushing this crocodile. And uh, the thing of it is when the thing that shocked me about it, this whole sculpture was that when I saw the crocodile, the dream came back to me because it was just like the crocodile in my dream. It just, it was the same. I can't explain it to you. And so I looked at it and I was like, there's only one difference with this crocodile. It's small. This crocodile is small. And in my dream, it was huge. And immediately the Lord said to me, no, Mandy, the crocodile is the same size. The perspective is different because the lion is so big that it towers above the crocodile and the 
crocodile in comparison with the lion is so small. And I realized, oh my goodness, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, you have the authority over all these things, over every enemy of our lives, over everything that is trying to take up space on our territory. You are Lord of that, and you have the power to make that small and crush it. Now, now hear, hear me here. In the dream, I knew God could have done that, but God wasn't wanting to do that. He wanted me to do it. Like I was kind of left. It, well, he didn't even say to me, Manny, I want you to crush the crocodile. He basically says, here's some land and it's got a crocodile. It's got a monster on it. Basically just gave me land with a monster. And I thought, oh, well, if he gave me land with a monster, I'm just going to avoid the land. Yeah, God's not coming to kill the monster, so I'm just going to avoid the land. But the reality is we know from scripture, when, when God gives us territory, there's usually monsters and giants on that territory. He usually doesn't just say, here's territory, no giants. I killed all the giants. You know, he gives us the territory and we're going to go and kill those giants. In fact, when you're, we, if the Lord ever invites you into a battle, he never invites you into a battle because he wants you to go kill monsters. He invites you into a battle because he's got territory for you. And so he's like, here is, it feels like, oh, I'm being invited into this battle. I don't want to fight this enemy. And it's not that. It's just that he's like, I've got territory for you. And there's the monster. Get rid of the monster. Territory is yours. And so I want to just share something with you. All of this is amazing and revelatory and what it's amazing stuff but but this is the key you know you can you can switch off now and you've learned nothing because here's here's the kicker most of us we get it we understand jesus is stronger than all those monsters but we're still small so we don't understand how we have to how do we crush that when we're so small well i want to read you something isaiah 60 actually I, i'm not reading it <laughs> i've got these little scriptures in front of me i, I can't read it too small but i'm gonna i'm gonna tell tell you this is what Jesus said when he, he pronounced his ministry on earth. He said, he read from Isaiah 61. He said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to, um, to heal the brokenhearted, to release the captives from prison, to preach the gospel to the poor. Um, to, um, can't remember the rest. Uh, favor, to, to, <laughs> to release the favor of the Lord. Um, to, to declare it's the favor of the Lord has come. So basically he said, I've come to release prisoners, to uh, open cap release captives, uh, you know, heal the brokenhearted, preach the gospel to the poor. Like I've come to bring freedom. Basically he was saying, I come to bring freedom and I've also come to bring my favor and my light is shining on you. So that's what he said. He said, I have all authority. I've come to do that for you. I've come to crush everything in your life. He says that. And then it says this, it says, and they, the people that were, freed from prison, released and came into freedom, their broken hearts were healed. Those people who were captives, they're going to rebuild the ruins. They're going to go in and they're going to build cities. These, these people, not, not, not God, no, no, these people who have become free because God has delivered them and he's given them his power. So listen, we know Jesus said that he's given us all authority and all power. We have his authority and power if we're in him. We know that. I want to show you what that looks like. Because right before Isaiah 61, Isaiah 60 says this, Arise, shine. This is for you. I'm going to prophesy this over you. If you can receive this, if you can believe what I'm about to tell you, it's yours. It, it is 100% yours. It's not my word. It's the word of God. If you can just, if you've read this word a thousand times in your life and you thought, oh, that's nice but you never re received it for yourself, it means nothing to you. It means nothing, it's dormant. But if you can receive what I'm about to release over you, it will take life and it will no longer be dormant. And you will rise up like that bold line. Okay, here it goes. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. It's not your glory, it's his glory. And he has chosen to shine his glory on you. And he's not afraid or ashamed of having you carry his glory and his anointing and his authority. And then it says this, see, look, deep darkness covers the earth, deep, deep darkness. But the Lord rises upon you. This is the deep darkness. It's the thing we're scared of, whatever it is in your life. For some, you're thinking, cities you want to take cities you want to you want to set the captives free you wanted all these crazy things for others it's like i'm a captive for others it's like I, I i struggle with stupid things i never mind big things i struggle with small things that's your monster 
or I want, I want to do this, I want, I want to do that, but I'm too small-minded. That's your monster. Or I think I actually have a problem with demons. That's your monster. Yeah, your monster can be anything. It can be demons. It can be a small mind. It can, get, it can be broken thought patterns. It could be practical things in your life. It can, it can be uh, things that require a supernatural miracle, literally sicknesses that are incurable. Whatever it is, that's your monster. He says that the light of God arises upon you and whatever you need is, is in him is you are sufficient because he has given you that authority and you can release captives by his authority. You can release prisoners by his authority. You can bind up broken hearts by his authority. You can declare the favor of the Lord. You know, you, you have the power of God in you. So guys, I just want to encourage you. I just want to bless you with that word. Receive that. Whatever that means for you, receive it. I'm just going to show you the painting again. I just want to show you the, the face. That face was so aggressive. And I'll tell you something. If you guys stayed for this, this part of the video, you're going to get the best part. Because <laughs> I forgot to say it. Um, when I was walking at the beach, when I first saw this, I'll tell you what. I didn't see the crocodile. I just saw the lion because I didn't look down below. And as I walked and I saw it, there was one sculpture first and then there was this one. And the first sculpture was another lion, just like this. And um, it had its prey, like it had like all these little birds that it had caught and it was like dragging it, this is the sculpture. And it was dragging it and then I saw there were little cubs and it had just taken the, these, you know, taken its prey and it was, bringing, it was feeding its cubs. And then as I walked, I was like, oh, there's the other lion. I think that's the daddy and that one was vicious and I'm like oh wow why is that daddy vicious he's protecting his children and I saw him doing that guys we have authority we gotta take it god bless you